Christian doctrine so I can try to brag and show everybody what I know. This doctrine is going to help me to live right under the pressures of life and dealing with the attacks of the devil and dealing with demons that are trying to take me out and, and destroy the generations that are coming through me. That are trying, to, it's going to help me to deal with my boss on my job, to deal with family members, to deal with with divorce and remarriage and to deal with kids acting a fool and, and dealing with teachers that are going crazy and to deal with society, to deal with politicians and to deal, my foundation is tight. I'll deal with it. Let's go. Can I have an amen? Ooh, don't get me fired up up in here. So when you got your foundation right, you're not flipping out on all this stuff. Because why? I understand. Because God, through his word, he helps to give me strong foundation of doctrine. So stuff may come out with come at me, but doesn't line up with this. But we've got away from it in the church. Oh, that's boring, brother. But that's how you're going to survive. We want something. We got to spice it up. No, we got to get back to Christian doctrine, teaching those things that are going to equip people so that they understand how to deal with stuff. And no, it's not flashy. And no, it doesn't always feel good. And no, it doesn't, it's not always going to be the thing that makes you want to run through the church. But it's going to help you to, to be stabilized in the midst. A lot of people want to go high. I want to stay grounded. I want to have a, if God takes me up, I want him taking the floor with me. Oh, God, my goodness. I, can I have an amen? I want to have a good, <clears throat> let's go, Lord. But what happens is a lot of people, they just want to fly. Woohoo! Woo! Woo! <laughs> Man, you better have some foundation in you. When the devil came to try to tempt Jesus, he wasn't flying high. He was grounded in the Word of God. And he rebuked the devil and sent him packing. And he did it with scriptures. And so for us, it's the same thing. All scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. Now watch this. He says for reproof. He says not only reproof, he says for correction. Okay, this is one of the things that we also have to see. Reproof and correction are kind of the same. But what happens is, is this. When it comes to correction and reproof, we have to understand that we don't come to God perfect. And so part of the word of God his job is to expose areas in our lives that need correction. And we have to learn to embrace that aspect of Christianity. It's like, I'm coming to God and I'm not perfect. And so God is going to expose areas in my life and I have to be humble enough to allow the word to expose things in my life so that I can be equipped. The problem is, is most people do not like acknowledging that they're wrong. Can I have an amen, y'all? We have created an excuse culture. It's my mom's, all my problems are my mom's fault and my dad's fault because they didn't give me this and they didn't give me that and they didn't do that and do that. And you go to some of these secular humanist uh, counselors and that's the only thing because they're not inspired by God, this is the thing that they, well, tell me what your mom did to you. And tell me what your dad did to you. And, and tell me. Now, I know things happen. I mean, parents aren't perfect. I'm not perfect. My wife's not perfect. Stuff happens. I understand growing up. And you guys know my testimony. Yeah, I had it rough. But I can't blame everything that I did on my mom and dad. Somebody told me not to do it. I did it. Next thing you know, I'm in juvenile hall. And my mom comes, she said, I told you not to do that. I, said, I know. <laughs> I just want to do it. Well, what happens is, is saints, but what happens is, saints, the problem that we have is if we don't learn to take personal responsibility and allow God to use his word as a, as a correction tool, then we'll never be thoroughly equipped for every good work. It's a beautiful thing when you can look at the Word of God or look at somebody that's counseling you and say, you know what, that was me. I blew it. 
that was my fault. It's my fault. And then that humility is what kicks God's grace in. Because God resists the proud. He gives his grace to the humble. That humility is what's going to cause God to say, now I got you. Now I can take you where I want you to go. But if we become so prideful, we never, we don't listen to anybody. We don't listen to God. We don't listen to the word of God. We don't listen to the preacher. We don't listen to, any, don't listen to our spouses. And then what happens is we're, we're wondering why we keep spinning our wheels in our relationship with God. And why we're not getting better. It's because you won't acknowledge that you're messed up. And that's okay. It's the most beautiful thing that God chose you when you were messed up. But then he comes in and he starts to furnish you with that which is necessary to accomplish his task for you in the earth. He starts to equip you to do something, to equip you to do something beautiful in his sight. But there's no way we can get that through if we don't experience or we don't allow reproof and correction through God's word. Can I have an amen, y'all? We have, we have raised up, we have raised up a generation and generations now where everybody gets a trophy it's like, no, you don't get a trophy, you lost. <laughs> I mean, I'm good. I mean, give them a trophy, but don't give them the one that's like, you won. <laughs> well, we don't want anybody to feel like they lost, but they did. <laughs> Can I? Now, they did, but there, here's another one that's good, you know what I mean? But it's not that one, the big one. And so now people go through life, right? And then they're in their marriage. And, and they do something. One of the spouses does something. And, and the other spouse says, basically in so many words, you lost. You didn't do that right. No, I didn't. I really won. You just can't see it. <laughs> so the kids come to their teacher and they say, hey, you didn't turn in your homework. You, 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 you've got a, you got a 50 in this class because you didn't turn in your homework. Well, but, uh, yes, I did. Well, no, you didn't. You did not. Well, because my mama. She didn't turn it in. And so I got, and then there's always an excuse. Can I talk about it this morning, y'all? But the word of God, the word of God it's not going to hide our excuses. The Word of God is profitable for doctrine and for correction. And it's a beautiful thing when we can look ourselves in the mirror and say, man, I messed up on this, but thank God he's going to help me get it right. And I'm willing to submit to that and acknowledge in my heart. And it doesn't mean I'm a bad person because I made a bad decision. It just means that God needs working on me. I got to get this fixed. God is going to give me the grace to get it fixed. But we've created a culture where it's blame everybody else instead of look at yourself. And as a result of that, we have people that can never become equipped the way God wants them to become equipped. Because in order to be equipped, you have to, ex you have to receive that which the word of God is going to do in your life. And that's going to, it's going to be to correct you. Can I have an amen, y'all? And that means all of us. He says, for reproof, for correction. Now look at this, for instruction in righteousness. Okay? And so the word of God is going to instruct me in righteousness. I don't know everything that is right concerning or according to God's will. God is going to instruct me in righteousness. Teach me what righteousness really looks like. Well, that means that some of my ideas of righteousness, I have to be willing to let them go. That means that maybe somewhat what somebody told me about righteousness, I have to let that go. Because now God, through his word, his equipping tool, is going to instruct me in righteousness. So that now I start to get God's view of it instead of just embracing the world's view of it. And then as we do that, we start to see ourselves grow and mature. And then look what he says in verse 17. He says, that the man of God may be complete. 
the word is tied there to maturity. Okay, complete means maturity, that I'm, I'm coming of age, I'm growing up, I'm maturing. As I allow God's tool, the word of God, to work on me. Now I'm starting to grow up. Now the stuff that I used to do in terms of making excuses, I don't make the excuses anymore. Now, instead of me blaming my teachers for why I didn't turn in my homework, I say, man, I did. I just overslept. I was tripping. I got an F. I'll take it. And I'll just, can I do some makeup work, though? You know what I'm saying? And so what happens is now we're complete. We're starting to get mature. We stop doing this, and we start allowing the Word of God to work on us. And then he says, complete or mature, he says, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Somebody say, every good work. So that means every good work. That means now, as a person that is walking with God, whether you're a minister, whether you're a businessman, whatever, whatever capacity you're in, whether it's a combination of both, that every good work that God has ordained for your life, now you're, you have received a su sufficient supply of furnishings within you that you come on the scene with a level of confidence because I know God has prepared me for this moment. And he didn't prepare me by just putting something on me. He prepared me by putting something in me. So now Joseph, when he goes from, from the pit to Potiphar's house to the prison, when he gets to the palace, there's a level of confidence and understanding that God has prepared me for this moment right here. And I'm very, I'm, I'm well, well equipped to handle this situation. Nothing like getting into a situation and you know that you're not prepared for it. But when you've gone through God's school of preparation and you've allowed the word of God to become a strong foundation within you, then when God puts, places you in a situation, there's something, something starts to rise up within you that sometimes we didn't even know was there. Or when you look at a situation and you start thinking about what you're going through and then you remembered how somebody else that was godly dealt with the same situation. Now you have another point of reference and it says, ah, you say, ah, I know how to handle this because I watched that man of God or that woman of God go through the same thing. And this is how they did it. And so now, when you, when you live your life, you're living your life from a position of strength, of emotional strength, physical strength, doctrinal strength. And now, when you come into something, there's a level of confidence that you have. I've been built for this. I fought the lion, and I fought the bear. If God gave me victory over them, then I can beat Goliath. Can I have an amen? Moses, Moses, the first thing that God does is, Moses, he knows that I saw, the, I saw God t turn the, 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 the Nile River. I saw him turn it into blood. I saw him release the lights. And I saw him release the frogs. And I saw him do all these things. And then now when I come to the Red Sea, it's just another level of confidence. Because now if we're here, I'm going to lift my hands up. God, something's got, we saw God do that. We know he's going to do this. His testimony with God. And I can go all throughout the scriptures. When you start seeing God do things, what does it do? It heightens your expectations and there's a confidence. And when you start to read the Bible and stop reading it like a novel and start reading it like it is God inspired and all these stories are there for me so that when I come into a situation I can have a point of reference to say if God delivered him from the lion and the bear then God can deliver me from my can I have an amen and then now my foundation is strong and then what is what happens and God says okay now I can take you higher and I can put more on your plate. Why? Because I've equipped you to do it. Stop saying that you can't do it. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. 
Stop saying that, I don't know, I don't know if it's going to happen. Did God do it for somebody else? Well, then God can do it for you too. Our job is to stay in faith and allow God to continue to equip us for every single good work. But pastor, I don't know if I'm qualified. Well, you might not be qualified, but you equipped. <laughs> I love that. Woo, I love that. Think about what I just said. Think about what I just said. You may not be qualified, but you are equipped. And because you're equipping, being equipped doesn't mean I got all the doctrines and the this and the that. And I got to have DR, I got to have this. And, no, but are you equipped for what God has asked you to do? Mary wasn't qualified. But God had equipped her to give birth to the Son of God. She said it in her prayers. How could you look on a lowly servant like me? And, and she's crying out to God. God knew just who he needed to be in the right place at the right time. So he can breathe life into her and bring forth the Messiah at the right time. And it's the same thing for you. Now, I want to say this in closing. You know, when we... When we embrace this aspect and the slow process of preparation, what's going to happen to us is that we're going to be, a, we're going to be people that may not shoot off like stars. Okay? We may not be people that shoot off like stars. But I don't know about you. I, I want to be, I want to be like the, I want to be like a, like the moon. Or the sun. I just, I want people to know he's going to be there. A lot of people want to be shooting stars. But they shoot and they disappear. I want to be a fixture. When you look up in the sky and you, you just, you, uh, it's, it's going to be there. But that's how people need to see us as Christians. Man, that guy just going to walk with God, man. I don't know what anybody else is going to do. That dude going to walk with God. She, she's a woman of God. That's just, she's going to be there. And I know I can count her. She's going to be there. What happens is we lose that when people, when people want to just blow up. Why is it taking so long for God to use me? Why is it taking so long for for for? For this and that, it's taking too long. It's taking too long. How old are you? 22. <laughs> Can I have an amen, y'all? You're 20, and you're crying about, God, use me now. It's like, no, sit over there and learn your ABCs again. Because, now let me say this in closing, because what happens is you, you don't want to microwave this process. We want to be like the old oak tree. We want to be like an old redwood. We want to be, we want to be, let us, we want to be the type of individual saints that the process, we allow God's process to take its course and we enjoy the process just as much as we enjoy the destination. You enjoy the process just as much as you enjoy the destination. Now, if you, if you are driving down the 101, you go on a vacation, like we go on our vacation. We go to, we'll go down to Pismo Beach, go down to Santa Barbara, hang out. The destination is a beautiful place. But if you get all bent out of shape, going from here to your destination, when you get to your, the, the place, you're not going to enjoy it as much. Because you all, feathers, feathers are all ruffled before you get there. Finally we hear, my goodness. 
But if you, if, you just, if, you just, if you just look out the window and start looking at the scenery, if you just sit in the car and just enjoy talking to your family finally, If you just turn on some music and kind of shout and, and have a good time, listen to some music and praise God on the way. If you just sit back and turn on the air conditioning and just say, you know what, phew, I'm just going to enjoy this ride. Then when you get to the de destination, it's, it's, it's that much better. But the problem that we have is God will take us from all kinds of muck and mess and then he'll start taking us on his journey and we'll get in the car and we'll complain all the way. <laughs> Instead of just joining God. God, I'm here. I don't know what everything's going to be. But God, I'm just thankful that you're in the car with me and that we rolling. Can I have an amen? Now work on me. Equip me to do whatever it is that you want me to do. I'll submit to the process. I'll submit to the journey. Can I have an amen, y'all? Lord God, we just thank you this day that you are thoroughly equipping us for every good work. And Lord, the good work that you've ordained for our lives is in your hands. Lord, we just pray that you would use your word and godly examples as instruments to help us to become who you want us to become. And Lord, we don't want to be people that just meander through life, always worrying about the destination. Lord, help us to enjoy the journey with you. That God, you're with us. You're talking with us. When you took the, the Israelites out of Egyptian captivity, you were there with them, and they just complained the whole time. Help us, Lord, to not be complainers, but to yield to the process of discovering who we are in you and allowing your spirit to, Lord, lead and guide us. God, please forgive us for neglecting your word and not allowing your word to be used as a tool of correction, of reproof, for instruction in righteousness, and for doctrine. And help us to embrace the slow process of you indoctrinating us with your truths so that we can have a firm foundation. God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that you're raising up a church that is strong and powerful and has a strong foundation of truth and that not only us but our children and our children's children's children will prosper because the truth of God's word that comes forth from this house. And God, we ask that, Lord, as we go outside these four walls, that people would see us as people of stability and grace. And that, God, we would lead them to you. And you would be glorified in them. We just give you the praise today. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody said amen, amen, amen. Come on, everybody, stand to your feet, if you would. Yes. You know, I, I want to share this story with you, and we're going to have an altar call for anybody that needs prayer for anything. Whatever is going on in your life, you want prayer this morning, come on down. One of the greatest things that ever happened to me was I had a pastor when I first got saved. Pastor James Davis, the thing I loved about him is that he wasn't impressed with me changed my life because at that time I'm a first round draft pick I'm all over the media the, our team had just moved from LA to Oakland so there was a bunch of buzz and I was the first round pick of that class that came here it was a bunch of hype and I'll never forget him meeting him and all he cared about he just loved Jesus he just loved Jesus and he was such a great example but I remember him telling me you may know about football you may know about this stuff he said but you don't know about this yet he said, you don't know about this yet son he said so what I want you to do is I want you to sit down and I want you to listen to me 
And I'm going to teach you about Jesus. And for me, that was such, such a refreshing, it was such a blessing. Because he was right. He was so right. And you would go to places, I would go to places, and they would, because of who I was in the world, and they want to put me up in the pulpit, and, hey, get them up and testify, and this, that, and the other. And it was such a blessing that Pastor Davis, he didn't say all that. He said, I want you to learn. I want you to learn. Learn about God. It just freed me. I didn't, I didn't feel like I had to be impressive or t- let somebody what I know, know what I know and this, that, and the other. Just, just receive and grow and mature. And I look now at myself and Elder Kenyon, and we now, because of the foundation that he laid in our life, you see what we're doing. You don't see us out there acting crazy, acting a fool. You don't see us because we had a good teacher that just laid good foundation in our lives and was not impressed with us he just wanted to see Jesus in us can I have an amen y'all and saints this is what we need we got to return to that all this star stuff let's get it out of the church and let's get back to sound teaching doctrine foundation we're going to have a great time we're going to laugh we're gonna have to, but you know what we're going to laugh with a foundation under us. Can I have an amen? Can I have an amen, y'all? Lord, touch your people and help us to become more like you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you need prayer for anything, come on down to the altar. If this message has touched you this morning, come on down. We want to pray for some people. God bless you, sister. God bless you, sister. Come on down. If you have anything, altar workers, find somebody and let's pray and believe God for them. And with them. Come on, altar workers. Come on. Thank you for joining us for Times of Refreshing. This program is a production of the Well Christian Community. You can learn more about our church and the various ministries we offer by visiting us on the web at www.thewellchurch.net or by calling our office at 925 479 1414. Or if you're looking for a church home or visiting the Livermore area, we would love for you to come by and visit us. Our service times are Sunday, 10.30 a.m. We are located at 2333 Nissan Drive in Livermore, California, 94551. For direction to our church, call us at 925-479-1414. Until next time, may Jesus Christ be highly exalted in your life. And may his word bring you a peace that transcends all understanding.